Now, you know, one of the saddest aspects about this gasoline crisis is how much of it is really self-inflicted. Joining me now, the Bonson Group managing partner, David Bonson. And, you know, David, this week, Bloomberg had this glowing article about J.P. Morgan strategist Marco Kalanovic uh, saying that he's living up to the moniker of, quote, Wizard of Wall Street for pointing out the impact of plague, uh, pandemic plague supply chains and years of underinvesting in dirty energy. So there are two things that came to my mind. First off, I thought the Wizard of Wall Street was Dave Bonson. Number two... You know, when Marco said, don't worry, gas price, oil won't go to $150 a barrel, I thought, gee, thanks a lot. So what are we looking at? You know, and I had this conversation many times. I mentioned 100 bucks. You said that's way too high. Everyone's jumping on that bandwagon now, David. Yes, well, I uh, most certainly am not the wizard of Wall Street, but thanks for the kind words. I just am one who, like you, by the way, are passionate about bringing Wall Street to Main Street. And, and I want the best parts of capital markets to be investable for all. And here's the thing that is so frustrating about this. All of us can invest in the things that are necessary to improve the energy sector, to bring down prices for consumers, to generate uh, competition in the sector so it's not just one or two players that dominate oil production, and also to facilitate a cleaner delivery, a greener result, less carbon emissions. We can do that by investing more in energy, not less. And so even that Bloomberg line, by the way, about, oh, well, we're reaping the consequences of underinvesting in dirty energy. They're getting the economics right. We haven't invested enough in exploration and production, but it's not dirty energy. It's the energy necessary to feed humanity. It's the energy necessary to keep people from freezing to death. So they keep talking as if we're doing this dirty thing and that there's some other alternative out there that can warm the entire world and feed the entire world. We need oil and gas. And it's not a question of whether or not we're going to need it. It's a question of where we're going to get it and where the rest of the world's going to get it. It's cleaner coming from us. This pushes prices down. This is the right solution. Unfortunately, though, we're not going in that direction. And, and, you know, Wall Street, ESG, the Biden administration, all of these things stopping, slowing down investments that you just talked about. So consequently, where could the price go? I mean, I, you know, I mean, people are talking $100, 150 dollars a barrel. Well, again, there's more than just the United States as a marginal producer. So OPEC had massively decreased their production because of the uh, pandemic related issues. Now the supplies need to come back higher. But I don't care what the rest of the world does. I want us to be in charge of our own fate. And and I don't think this is a Wall Street problem uh, other than capitulating to ESG. But there is private equity money. There is private credit that will come in and fund the energy story in our country, the Expected rates of returns are massive. Look at the energy sector's performance year to date. Look at it over the last few weeks when there's been a lot of volatility. There's ample returns out there in natural gas. It's at the highest price it's been in over seven years. There's plenty of margin. The technology's gotten better. So what's the solution? It's in economics to be allowed to work in a free market economy. And we do not need to give in to the ESG bullies on this. You may not be the Wizard of Wall Street, but I tell you what, you got me singing your praises because I loved every word you just said. Have a great weekend, David. Appreciate it. Thanks, Charles. You too.